Howdy everyone, Mr. Kazi here with another lesson and today we're going to talk about the new physics. In this lesson, we'll talk about the uncertainty principle, the quantum mechanical model, and the Bohr versus Einstein controversy. That's right, scientists do not always agree on everything and we need to be aware of that. All right, in this lesson, you must know de Broglie's hypothesis, de Broglie's equation, and the wave mechanical model. You also need to learn and memorize Planck's constant and the speed of light, two things that you really need to know for working out frequency equations and things like that. So get to know those. All right, remember that when we started off this study of the atom and the atomic models, there are three questions we need to answer. And those three questions, uh, one, uh, what is the electron? And two, where is the electron? And three, how does it behave? And we're going to see here now that the quantum mechanical model is going to finish up where the electron is, how to find it. Then we're going to take that information and use it to talk about how the electron behaves. And remember, that's the important part because electrons are responsible for how things bond and react. All right, the quantum mechanical model. In learning the quantum mechanical model, one of the first things that we need to understand is the uncertainty principle. Schrodinger came up with his wave mechanical model. They weren't sure to how to apply them because they only really worked for hydrogen. Heisenberg decided that we should suggest, okay, we can't know the place of the electron. We can't know the momentum or the position at the same time. And this is the uncertainty principle. And this kind of makes sense. Listen to it this way. When we look at something and when we try to view something, we see things because of the reflection that comes back to our eyes. Now this reflection is the reflection of photons that have hit an object, bounced off, and come back to our eyes. Our mind interprets these impulses. Well, if this is the case then, and we see because of this reflection, then any time that we try to see the electron, we have to use something to bounce off of it or reflect off of it so that we can see it. And the photon many times is going to be powerful enough or have enough energy that when it hits the electron or the substance, it's going to bounce the electrons out or move the electron. It makes sense. You can't see the electron or know its position at the same time as the momentum just because of its sheer size. It's very, very small. And the photon's either going to be too low in energy to have any bouncing effect at all or it's going to be too high in energy and it's going to move the electron. And I think if you really want to know more about this, you should look up some of the lectures like six easy pieces or six not so easy pieces by Richard Feynman. The uncertainty principle makes sense and there's nothing wrong with realizing that maybe you don't know everything. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Quantum mechanics. Max Born said, hey, if the uncertainty principle is true, then why not work with that? Take the Schrodinger equations and realize they're just mathematical possibilities. And so he suggested that the solutions to Schrodinger's equations be used as possible positions for the electron. Now these wave equations put together by Schrodinger are pretty complicated and you can go uh, look some of them up. But for chemistry, all you need to know is that these solutions give us the possible locations or the orbitals of the electrons. And orbitals are just places where the electron might be found, where it might be in the electron cloud. And we're going to look at the quantum numbers that will help us understand that. And the quantum numbers describe the orbital occupied by the electron. It's kind of like your address. Your address tells us exactly where you are. Your address tells us what state you're in. It tells us what city you're in. It tells us what street you're in. And specifically, it even tells us what house you're in. However, it doesn't tell us where you are in the house. So there is some uncertainty. And that's kind of how these quantum numbers work. All of the quantum numbers now, and these ideas by uh, Max Born, are going to bring us to the electron arrangement of the electrons in the atom. That's what electron configuration is. It's just the arrangement of the electrons in the atom and they're not in these orbits anymore as Bohr suggested. What they are is now they're in these possibilities, these orbitals. And you need to remember that orbitals are just possibilities. Most of what I'm talking about here, I can't prove to you, but I can take you to the laboratory. 
we can make some predictions based on these electron configurations and they're workable. And so there's a major word here you need to remember and that word is workable. Science is not truth. Science is workability. And we take that workability and we use it. We develop technology with it. And then the technology helps us improve our workability. And when we get new data, we just write new theories. So the quantum model is mostly space, has a positive nucleus. Now we know that's protons and neutrons inside of the nucleus. We know that there are negative electrons. And most importantly, we know that these electrons are the, in these energy levels, in these orbitals, and we can determine where these orbitals might be according to quantum numbers. Now this answers the second question so that we can move into the third. Now with all this about the quantum mechanical model, let's remember here that not everyone agreed with Bohr or Max Born. Max Born produced his ideas and Max uh, or um, Niels Bohr thought these ideas were great, but Einstein Schrodinger could not accept the uncertainty principle. Schrodinger, who came up with the wave equations, could not accept the uncertainty principle. They were very much against it and because of this, it began a, a whole new argument and we had this whole thing where Bohr versus Einstein, or what I call Bohrites and Einsteinians, disagreed on the interpretation of the quantum mechanics. And so in 1925, and again in 1927, they got together and basically held a symposium or conference, whatever you want to call it, on quantum mechanics and how to interpret it. And Bohr and his people were declaring that we've got quantum mechanics solved. We know where it's at. We know exactly how things are happening. And Einstein and Schrodinger and their followers said, no, that's not true. We do not all agree on it. And there's still some doubt. Now, Einstein helped put all this together. But you've got to remember that scientists don't always agree. And even today, we don't completely agree on the interpretation of the quantum mechanics. But we do know that the uncertainty principle is workable and tends to be the, what's correct at this time. And so we have the Solvay Conference in 1927. And in one of their arguments, Einstein was known to uh, say to Born and to Bohr, God does not play with dice. And Bohr's response to that was, Einstein, stop telling God what to do. So remember that a lot of what we're talking about here is still very questionable. And of course, we get new data, we'll have new ideas. Now, here's a, a quote from Isaac Asimov, and I think we need to really pay attention. The existence of uncertainty need not be a source of humiliation for science if a tiny but crucial uncertainty is part of the fabric of the universe. It is a tribute to scientists to have discovered the fact. And knowing that we can't know everything and realizing that helps move science along. And who knows, one day someone might be able to bring this together. That's kind of what the idea behind the string theory is or uh, the chaos theory. All right, wrapping it up. The atom is mostly space with a very small, dense, positively charged nucleus surrounded with negatively charged electrons located in energy levels determined by wave function. This whole quantum mechanical theory is totally mathematical and has very little empirical evidence. However, we have been able to make empirical predictions and they are workable. I love that word workable. Uh, we're not looking for truth here, just workability. All right, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com and check out www.mrkazi.com for PowerPoints and much, much more. Or you can join my YouTube. All right, everyone, happy ions.